Hey over there, Joe Lunchbox. I'm Joy go. And today we have landed right here in Oracle, Arizona. We're going to go to an attraction that me and Joy have always wanted to go to now. Some of you out there might be a little younger than us watching this, so let me explain. Mm -hmm. You see, when we were kids in 1987, there was talks on TV of this crazy thing being built down in the desert of Arizona. It's called Biosphere 2. Now you might be wondering, Biosphere 2, was there a first one? No, no. That's what I thought. Yeah. <laughs> Biosphere 1 is the Earth. It's inspired off the Earth. See, there was a guy that grew up on a commune or lived on a commune here named John Allen. And he wanted to see if he could build a self-sustained environment that people could survive in and grow and live symbiotically with the, inver with the environment around it. So kind of like how we actually do out here? Yeah, yeah in, in the earth. But he <laughs> felt the earth's coming to an end. We have to prepare, doom, build stuff. Doom, doom, doom. And could it be done? So they decided they're going to build this giant building that's going to have spots to house people, have a large planting field, five uh, ecosystems in it. They were going to have a savanna, a rainforest. Desert. A desert. Marsh. Marsh. And... A Ooh. giant ocean That's cool. and see if people could live here for two years so he found a crazy rich millionaire that thought this is a good idea from Texas that's always a good thing to find named <laughs> Edward Bass that invested 200 million dollars to build this thing and when it happened in September of 91 they decided they'd lock eight scientists in here four men four women double cork the window shut make it truthfully self-sustained and things went horribly wrong first people were like hey eight scientists I wonder what these eight people are going to do in here for two wink, years wink wink nudge nudge yeah but um what ended up happening was biosphere 2 didn't succeed as a self-sustaining environment uh some problems happened where we had el nino that year and because of the limited sun the plants didn't grow there were also ants that were getting in everything and cockroaches the nitrogen rich soil started actually depleting oxygen so at first they had to use oxygen bags and then people actually, they had to pump in oxygen so it wasn't self-sustaining. Lack of food, people started stealing food that we weren't supposed to know they had backup food supplies. Condensation on the um, the windows for the desert made us it this way, it would kind of like yeah. moist and, and rain on and it was too, too wet in the desert, so things went terribly wrong. They tried it again, different, with people coming in and out after the first attempt failed. They did do the two years though and came out 50% later big ceremony when it was starting and they who wouldn't have known and uh they tried to use the science facility stuff's closed uh columbia university took over for a while they sold off now it's being run by university of arizona so i'm excited because back when it first happened when i was a kid i'm like i'm gonna go in there i want to live in the biosphere too and now we finally actually get to tour it and joy wanted to go up because of a different reason so I totally remember it, but then I totally forgot about it. And then they had this movie with Pauly Shore in it. And Stephen uh -huh. Baldwin. And Stephen Baldwin. Oh my God, they were so funny together. Anyways, um, <laughs> it was taking the concept of what yeah, it was... happened with the biosphere and making it into a movie called Biodome. Biodome. And then Joy liked the Polish show would be like, hey, buddy, we got to get the purple sticky purple punch. Sticky punch. Which was weed. They snuck weed in it and grew purple. it in here. It I know. Was totally it's a hybrid. And it actually helped with the oxygen levels and all this weird, funny movie. You get to see Tenacious D being young playing at the festivals outside the Biodome. I first knew what they were. Like. Yeah, before I even knew who Tenacious D were. But um, it's a fun movie. So, and I wanted to be a scientist when I was a kid so I was like here so we get to actually go inside take it's a tour be pretty cool. of Biosphere 2 so step right up let's go for this ride got wood petrified wood oh, I'm excited building entrance I'm glad they opened this up now for tours because what are you going to do with a giant $200 million thing in the middle of the desert? That you were only supposed to experiment for two years and whatever. Like, yeah. Yeah, there was really not that much after that. I'm just glad I went. At one point, that they were actually thinking of tearing it down and building oh. building housing on this That's land. Scary. But we get to go in it under the glass. You can add on the Ocean Beach tour. Ooh, $8 per. For their history tour. Under the glass, or the, the ocean beach tour sounds actually cool. 
maybe maybe so we'll this do that. Under the glass is totally what's included. <laughs> yeah, seventy-five minute tour, but Ocean Beach tour. That sounds cool that too. That sounds really cool. There it is. Look at that building. We're about to be in there. Look, Joy, talking about how it's airtight seals. To my right, a window, several planes of heavy glass held in place. Seal immediately after construction and throughout closed mission or biosphere tier. Proved to be the world's most tightly sealed structure. Its leak rate was under 10% of its air volume annually. Here is some of the structure. In June of 2009, Life Magazine, 50 must see natural and man-made marvels. Biosphere 2 made it. <laughs> Look, Joy, here it is. This, this is our first view of the Biosphere 2 structure itself. Oh. Biosphere 2. We've made it to Biosphere 2. Could you imagine what people were thinking when, they, when this thing was being built in the 80s? We have a nice moon above it too. All those different habitats built in. You can see the trees up to the glass. That's crazy. Like we're really kind of like bending over. Yeah. Oh, I'm excited to go take this tour. Yeah, no, definitely. There are other added tours. We're taking the regular tour. You can take a history tour. You can take an ocean tour. We were going to do the ocean tour. And then they're but like, it, one o'clock. I was yeah, like, it's a lot. We're here at nine in the morning. We weren't going to hang yeah. all day. We have other spots we have to get to, but another time I'm going to come. I want to do those other tours. Rethink the grid, a model city with new technology. Okay, so it's to learn how to integrate renewable energy. That's the, the new thing they're using it for. That's pretty cool. The University of Arizona. Because this is where science lives. Science! Talking about the University of Arizona. It's collaborating with Tucson Electric Power to test all these, uh, you see them here against the wall. Solar panels. Solar growing in new places. And the other one there. Look at, look, at, look at the trees up to the glass. They had a problem also in their rainforest that morning glory vines were strangling plants in the rainforest back then. Oh, wow. That's crazy. Yeah. Joy, we're about to go in this thing. Awesome. We're going to go in the biosphere. Double layer of corks. Oh, remember those ants I told you about? The ants also started eating through some of the cork at one point. Here inside the Biosphere 2 laboratory is a fully established mini rainforest area. By subjecting this rainforest to changes in atmospheric CO2 content, air temperature, and moisture supply, the responses can be observed and compared to those predicted by researchers working in rainforests around the world. It's about to happen. We're going through the seal. They said it was, when it was sealed, it was more sealed than a space shuttle. That's crazy. Yeah, but a space shuttle, you don't want outer space again, then. It's more sealed than a space shuttle. Look, Windows Biosphere 2 crew. Members to interact with daily visitors. It was complete with phone connection. Special doors helped create a material closure that minimized the loss of air into only 10% per year. It's made Biosphere 2 one of the most tightly sealed buildings in the world when construction was complete. We're about to go through that air, air seal. Figure Joy, they'd seal you in here, close that door. It was, they closed the outer door. Yeah, and then they'd open the inner door. So this way decompress the... Yeah, and then you're in. Yeah. Upper habitat, number seven. Yeah. Oh, sorry, the upper habitat. Yes, yeah, so our living quarters are up here. I haven't seen any yet, Joy. I haven't seen any purple sticky punch. <laughs> <laughs> Farming on Mars, future lunar and Mars biosphere. 
Because that was the premise. If they can make it work here, we could do it in outer space. I like looking at these developmental greenhouses for outer space. And here we have one of those developmental greenhouses for outer space. That's awesome. Eating those freshly grown Martian tomatoes. That's cool. Got air, got water, got food. The old photo. Like Neil Armstrong or an astronaut with the earth behind, but now in the reflection, it's one of these greenhouses. We have some Bathrooms. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go check them out. See what space bathroom looks like. No, it's well, no, it's true. Habitat quarter. <laughs> it was probably used for their habitat quarter. Because if you look, it still has a slide shower in now the public restroom. Well, yeah, because right next to that was their living quarters. I know. That's cute. This is, I guess, their little living room area and then upstairs somewhere would be where they slept. Did their own, oh, I was showing them. They decorated their own living room mm -hmm. downstairs and then upstairs, but you can't really see it. Oh, that was their bedroom, so they had little lofts. Yeah. TV, oh yeah, they had all the technology in here for a self-sustaining uh, environment. Television, speaker. I like some of the old paintings they have here. And look at the old phone. Imagine before cell phones. And I guess that would be like one of the outfits that they wore. It's funny, I thought it would be like camping. I thought it would be like camping. I, I could live in this thing for two years. Yeah. No prom. I, I would have. You get a TV, like. When I was like, oh, I should go to Biosphere too. I would have, I would have made it. The here we're learning science. about the Marine Science Laboratory. Scientists only, Joy. And the doctor. Take it all in. We are under the dome. We're gonna start with a little movie. We had we got our our little speaker box for our audio tour and headphones. And I like to to keep it sanitary. Leave us little stockings we have to put on our headphones. It's cute. Yeah. A biome is a distinct biological community formed in response to a shared physical climate. <laughs> I'm sorry to tell you, I didn't tell you something. No. This is actually the next group of scientists. We're actually going to be locked in for two years starting today. I would have known beforehand, because then I would at least park pads like my charger. <laughs> no, no technology, except the video camera. I hid stuff in here before. What do you think I was at three in the morning? <laughs> I charged our food, water, chargers, toiletries. Okay, I mean, just yeah. the chargers, so this way I can talk oh, to people. I forgot clothing for you, I'm sorry. I guess I'll have to I, keep on washing this oh, outfit. Oh, that was my plan. She foiled my plan again. <laughs> no, I'm very excited, this is gonna be a cool day. We're tuned in to Orville, we're going in. He's talking to me now. So we learned the final cost was 150 million. Started in 87, finished in 91. Three and a half years. Enjoy with grapefruits up there, lemons over here. So it was first run by Columbia University in New York, then Eventually, University of Arizona took over it to talk about the, in 2007, University of Arizona took over to study the effects of water on our country. I mean, water on our world. And in 2011, the deed to Biosphere 44, a, a lot of acres. In 2011, the deed to Biosphere 2 was granted by the man that it was the original investor to University of Arizona, giving it to them, and a bunch of money to do research. Pretty cool. Going into the rainforest, going to experience some humidity. Cameras might fog up quickly. 
Check in camera equipment, Joy. <laughs> Prepare to get foggy. We can look down at the ocean. So they had finished an experiment on drought. September 1st, the drought started after they put sensors all summer long. So they were actually measuring smells for the drought. Columbia University was checking from burning fossil fuels, all of all of the CO2 that was building up in its atmosphere, creating the greenhouse effect, how how that was affecting the earth. Leaving the rainforest to the next biome, to the African savanna. So we're going to the savanna, which is semi-arid. It's in between where the rainforest would be and the desert. <sighs> Looking down at the ocean. Figure covers 75% of Earth's surfaces covered by oceans. Their ocean is 1 million gallons of salt water from the San Diego area mixed with some fresh well water. There's the deepest end at 27 feet. We have a little beach at the other end. We have a ridge in the middle. Mm -hmm. During Columbia University and the increase of the carbon dioxide, there used to be coral on that ridge, it was a coral reef, but um, the experiment showed that the carbon dioxide killed all of that coral because of carbonic acid that from the CO2 levels that increased. And like all the corals down here, 50% of the coral in our Biosphere 1, the Earth's coral, are gone. Because of the same reason as the CO2. We're going into the next biodome. We, l we learned it was based off 23 degrees above the equator and 23 degrees below the equator. Meaning, two tropical zones was the initial start for biodome. Or Biosphere 2, sorry. Seeing a poorly shore again. Doing research on different soil to see how different plants work. We're in the lower savanna now. I like little savanna. Hmm? Little savanna. <laughs> so, we're in the savanna, which is semi arid, and then right here is a marsh which is overly wet based off like the Florida mangroves mm. and the mangroves they help filter out the marshes <laughs> so cool. because of the roots it also protected the little fish that were living there so the big fish couldn't come in and get it Besides the filtration. The netting for being yeah. anchored into there. And they're saying the marsh is the only analog biome, meaning they literally just took it and put it down and it survived. Instead of it being other ones where they had to develop the rainforest and develop the ocean. And this is an aquaponic farming, this tiered thing. The difference between hydroponics is we have fish at the top, the fish is waste is nitrogen rich which help fertilize the plants when a hydroponic environment they would have to introduce outside fertilization. So Joy. The ecotone where it was like a bridge from one to the next type of biome. Uh-huh. We're about to go to the desert now. A coastal fog desert. We're not there yet. We get getting there. 
Wow, this is occupy one third of the earth on this planet. Desert is purely precipitation. Now, what's interesting is that makes Antarctica because it's less of precipitation a desert, actually. The Sonora Desert here in Arizona goes down and it becomes a coastal arid desert in Mexico. So, the Baja is also a coastal fog desert along with this one right south of us in Mexico because the clouds develop from the sun over the ocean the, and then it moves over. Here in Biosphere 2 there is 3.5 acres of plant and life and vegetation but to support it we're going to go underground to see over two mm -hmm, to see over two acres of technology at the technosphere. No, it's That's a cute amazing. octopus cactus. Does that make this the octopus garden? Oh my god. Well, we're not in the shade. In the song it was. Joy, we're not exiting. We're going to the technosphere. Did you lose him? Joy lost him too. I've seen horror movies that start like this, Joy. There we go. The guy in our ears, he's fading in and out as we're going underground. And now I lost him again. There he is. Ooh, got some wind going in here. <laughs> Desert basement. In the tunnel, the hall we walked through before, there was good wind blowing. And he has cracked a joke saying that's why he left his toupee at home today. Oh, look at this heating water, water supplies. 2.5 acres of technology behind me. This is an air handler that gives it the climate to each of the biomes. <coughs> they use hot water and cool air to create the air temperature, then they direct that air to the structure. When it first opened in 91, there was over a million gallons of water, because you figure they weren't pumping new water in. They had to use the water. You hear the water running. Yeah. About to go in the water. <coughs> <long. laughs> <laughs> okay. We're going into this geodesic dome, which is uh, inside your brochure, and we're going into this very one, as there are two of them. Once you're in the tunnel, there is a railing on your left hand side that will support you down the entire 200 feet of this tunnel and as you traverse the tunnel, you will be descending. There's the step. This is cool, Joy. Very steep though, you feel the speed as we're walking. It's my first time walking through a lung. Joy, it wasn't a rave at the techno sphere. Uh-oh, look Joy. Lower access. Watch your step. Oh, man. <laughs> Is this their reservoir? Wow. <laughs> Some of the artificial rocks are the same people company in Tucson that makes artificial rocks for Disney. <laughs> <laughs> 160 feet. The same material that's used to make hovercrafts and zodiacs, those water skin. I want you to find a plate somewhere around the uh, perimeter of that disc and align that plate with something that is fixed. Where that We're fixing is this one. At this moment in time. Right there. Okay. So now again. However, here's the kicker on that. In this chamber, there's not one mechanically driven device. Only air, heated air coming in, expanding and lifting. Take a look at that plate that you first 
registered its position where it was. And thank you, yes, you both are all recognizing it for everyone else is too, that the disc has lifted. Wouldn't have done that. You would have only changed it maybe by a quarter of a degree. But that quarter of a degree, as you recognize, moved that disc up. That <coughs> it really is crazy that this controlled it, giving the air movement up and down so the glass wouldn't explode from the rise in the heat outside. Well, the heat, the sun outside, heating the inside. The disc lowered because we opened the door and increased some cooler air. <laughs> should be careful, Joy. <laughs> uh, so now you're inside the space that you have to see all the uh, excess air after this is to uh, 45 and then it is so this one is just that safe cloud. But it gives us an opportunity to see inside the GPS belt. We're going to exit out of that door and because we are in a negative environment in here, which means that there is uh, less air in here than there is than there was inside there and less air than there is outside there. So when I open this door, the air inside rushing out, fill up the space here, cause that this drop. So the air outside will be doing the same thing, rushing in. Uh, so when you exit through that portal, you will have your last year experience. So it will feel like you are skydiving. Be careful of your headsets, your glasses, your uh, hats. When you exit and the portal will be forced. Uh huh. But I like this dome, the geodesic cool. dome. So we had a backup lung here, the reserve lung, but never used it because the south lung worked perfect. 100 years. Yeah, complex was built to last 100 years. So they had 70 to 75 years. Yeah. 70 to 75 more years left to. So in 91, this area in front of us was the farm. Now it's the last research program, LEO. Landscape Evolution Observatory. Plants cooling solar panels with moisture, making the solar panels more efficient. And at night, the solar panels insulate so there won't be frost on them because it keeps the heat in there. And it, in the summer, it protects it, the shade from the sun from frying them. Interesting. Symbiotic relationship between man technology and plants. That's cool. We entered, we entered down below into lower habitat. Now we, the tour is done. <laughs> we get to go in here, the upper habitat, and see more of their living areas, some kitchens, dining rooms, where the doctor's office was. When he was a physician that was working in the biosphere. Which is really cool, because can't go wrong with doctors. Uh-huh. Do you think the other seven people had to have good insurance to use the doctor in here? <laughs> that would have been interesting. Give them the bill as soon as they get out. <laughs> here we have the original dining room and kitchen. Room with the view, it is a room with the view. I wish I had a range like that at home. Wow, they had to harvest their own coffee beans. It was very limited and they'd wait so they could make eight cups of coffee at a time, which happened about once every two weeks. During the second mission of Biosphere, which was different, they had a cup of coffee once a week. I know, Joe's like, wait, one cup of coffee every two weeks? No. And here we had the big dining room. Uh -huh. You definitely can see the late 80s into early 90s design. 
we could see them making some of their meals back there. I figured they didn't have olive oils or anything. They had to cook with what you had. And they didn't always have that much. Interaction laboratory. Ooh, science. I'm waving going in, being locked in. I would have wanted this joy, the scuba diving aspect. Oh, yeah. Imagine picnics by the ocean. And I see this is what we were learning is they're doing three different big experiments here in Biosphere 2 at the University of Arizona. The first one was testing droughts and rainforest seeing how the rainforest reacts to that. The second one, which they're doing here, was the acidification of the ocean and seeing if we could reintroduce coral where the coral has worn away because coral gives natural habitats for a lot of sea life, mm -hmm. helps prevent erosion on shorelines. We even have taxidermy here, Joy, in Biosphere too, And then some, some living fish. So it's ocean fish. <laughs> but the third experiment, that's right down the hall over here. The last experiment is Leo Landscape Evolution Observatory, where we have three exact hills made of basalt, and they're introducing water on them, and they're tracking the water, seeing how it inter interacts, because basalt is basically non, nothing living in it until the water goes through it. Then little microbes can start forming, just how the world began four and a half billion years ago and they're trying to figure out the microbes that grow and we already have some moss growing on the sides of stuff and they said they're going to do this for about a year and a half and then they're going to introduce plant life and do the experiment again with some plant life on it. Mm. To me those experiments seem really cool. I think it's interesting that, that this building was originally made as like a futuristic survival experiment back when it was originally envisioned in 87 and then how it evolved its purposes. Yeah, now it's just like a controlled Yeah, a controlled experiment. Now it's a controlled biospheres with, with the name. The biomes, the different environments controlled and they're able to do experiments because you can't do an experiment on the whole rainforest or the whole ocean. Like maybe so, droughts in one area, so, yeah. moisturize the other area. So it's really interesting how they're using it. And I think it's funny how it went from that original scientist to being more or less used by the university, uh, Columbia University up in New York, near us. And then in 2007, that University of Arizona started doing it. And then it was actually gifted to University of Arizona in 2011, along with a lot of money for funding of it. So now we don't have to worry about real estate people coming to tear it down because now it is owned by the university. So we can do research. Which is really great because then you have like their um, people that are studying like the science, marine biology, and stuff like that. Like yeah. you have your spot. Yeah. Here. Well, that's the good thing about universities, besides the college students, they use for research. Well, it's mainly sport and science. So. And right now, it's not about when it originally started the survival of mankind out of this world when we destroyed it, which was the lunar, mod, lunar complex. That not It's of how to save the real biosphere, number one, the Earth around us, from the effects that humans have done, the Industrial Revolution has done. Mm -hmm. That's like the increase of CO2. So I, I found this really knowledgeful. I enjoyed it. And walking around seeing how it works, like the lungs and all that, the pressure, yeah, the design of this building. I'm watching the people there and I'm like, I want to go back in. Yeah, I know. It was a really good tour. Yeah, you no, definitely. You enjoyed it, Joy? I so yeah. I think, I think we've seen almost everything we want to see. We've seen the living quarters, we've seen the original kitchens. Mm -hmm. We took all the tours there to see. Mm -hmm. We were going to exit through the gift shop. Of course. And then back to the car, but I think I think we call it Joy. Do you I think, think we so. call it Biosphere Number Two here in Oracle, Arizona? We we've been there, Joy, and we, we've done this. We've done. Definitely done that. Yeah. So remember, folks, safe travels. Goodies. And live life. I wanna pee where the Biospherians pee. Wait, I did. I used the Biospherians bathroom. You couldn't go into their old little apartments in the biosphere, but I peed in a biospherian's toilet. I call today a success in my opinion, but now it's off for more adventures.